All righty. Welcome everyone to StriveScan College Launchpad. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but you can use that Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is one of many sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com launch. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, and that is DigiPen Institute of Technology. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Cooper. I'm the Assistant Director of Outreach at DigiPen Institute of Technology. Um, I'm just gonna take you through some information about our college and share my screen. <clears throat> DigiPen um, is a private four-year college that was founded in 1988 in Vancouver, BC. And we um, focus on areas of computer science, digital art and animation, game design and development is music and sound design. We are located in Redmond, Washington, so on the east side of Seattle. So we're only about 16 um, miles away from a lot of different options of things to do. The Space Needle, hanging out at the Pike Place Market. Um, a lot of outdoor activities are near our campus, Mount Rainier, Olympic um, Peninsula, Woodby Island, um, being able to take a ferry over to one of the islands. Um, and so our students are able to spend a lot of time in downtown Seattle. In Redmond, we really are, live in the game development hub of the country. Um, so within 25 miles of our campus, there's around um, almost 400 uh, game related studios, as well as about 100 tech companies. Um, so you can see on the screen a number of companies. Um, Nintendo and Microsoft are both in Redmond. Um, Microsoft is actually our largest employer of DigiPen alum. Um, we have lots of connections with these companies. They visit our campus um, for company days, internship fair, career fair. Um, and so um, a lot of our alumni have been hired um, by these companies. Um, they've been hired by over 600 uh, companies. A little bit about DigiPen. We we're the first school to ever offer a video game programming degree um, by any college in the world. And that is our Bachelor of Science in Computer Science in Real-Time Interactive Simulation. We currently offer eight undergraduate programs and two graduate programs. Um, we have about 1,200 students. So on average, our students are in class with about 18 of their peers, um, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, depending on the class. So you really get a chance to get to know your faculty and your peers. Um, our graduates are credited on over 1,600 professional games. So if you've played a game recently, more than likely a DigiPen alum has been involved. Um, our games and animations have won quite a few awards. We've been ranked as one of the top five game design schools in the country um, for well over 10 years. Um, our students continue to do um, really great things. We are ranked as number one in Washington State on return on investment and um, found by Georgetown University's um, research. Um, so our students time, money and effort um, going into DigiPen really pays off in the end for them. Um, like I said earlier, we focus on four areas of study and our 10 degrees fall into these four categories. Um, so at DigiPen, you apply specifically to one program. Um, and so really we wanna be here to help you find the right program. So if that is game design, thinking about the user experience, do the rules make sense, does the story make sense? Um, do you want to focus on programming? Um, we teach C, C++, C Sharp in our uh, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science programs. So there's five options. Um, our largest program is actually our Bachelor of Fine Arts in Digital Art and Animation degree. Um, and we also have two sound related programs. So music, um, which is a pretty traditional music degree, um, as well as digital audio. So learning how to program a sound engine. That flagship degree I mentioned earlier is our real time interactive simulation. Um, that's programming a game engine. So students have a chance to do that on their own. At DigiPen, you're in class um, just like you would at a more traditional school, um, but really the core of our curriculum is being on a project team. So students are uh, working on a game or an animation um, with their peers, and they typically are graduating with three to four professional quality projects. Um, they work with their faculty to make sure that that is, um, would be something that works in the industry. Um, and so we try to mirror the industry as much as we can in the way that our students are learning at DigiPen. Um, to apply DigiPen, you fill out our application. We currently are um, optional for ACT and SAT. Um, we need your high school transcripts, a personal essay. Additionally, you can submit a second essay um, as well as letters of recommendation. Um, each program does have different admissions requirements. Um, for all of our Bachelor of Science, except for game design, we require at least pre-calculus. Our game design program, students um, write a design portfolio talking about three things that they've designed. 
our Bachelor of Fine Arts students submit an art portfolio um, to show their skill set, five prescribed pieces, as well as five to 10 additional pieces. Our music and sound design students submit video of their playing, of them playing their instrument of choice or singing. Um, and so that's kind of their audition into the program. Um, currently, um, unofficial transcripts are just fine for application. We can um, review your application with those official transcripts eventually need to be submitted. Um, ACT and ICT are currently optional. Um, and then we've been able to add and expand our scholarship opportunities. So there's lots of opportunities um, within DigiPen as well as external scholarships. Our application for fall 2022 is currently open. If you're still interested, still looking for a good college um, to join in the fall, our final application deadline is July 1st. You need to start the application by that date. Um, we encourage you to finish it as soon as you can. Um, registration is currently taking place this week, um, but um, if you're interested, feel free to reach out to us. We can help with that application to get it done. Um, our application for fall 2023 will open in September. There's lots of ways to connect with DigiPen virtually and in person. Um, we have degree program series, online information sessions happen about once a month. Each month, the, uh, the uh, theme is a little bit different. Um, you can connect with our current students on our website as well as virtual admissions meetings. If you're in the Seattle area, please come visit us on campus for campus tours. Um, our preview days, our next one is July 23rd on a Saturday. Um, and our student shadow program will return soon. Um, so you can spend the day on our campus um, with a DigiPen student. Um, feel free to contact our office. I'll put this information in the chat as well. Um, but you can reach out to us on the phone, uh, email, and then there is a text number on our website. Um, so please reach out if you have any questions. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Awesome. Thank you. Alrighty, next up we have Fresno Pacific University. Hi everyone, my name is Victoria. Um, I'm an admissions counselor with Fresno Pacific. I've been with FPU for about um, eight months now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, share my screen with you and then I will get into the presentation. All right, okay. So just a little bit about FPU. Um, we are located in Fresno. We're known as the Central Valley. And so we're pretty central to um, different locations across California. Sacramento, San Francisco, Pismo Beach. Um, we're not far from Yosemite National Park, Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Parks. Those are about 45 minutes from us. Um, and so we are the fifth largest city in California. We have over 300 days of sunshine. Um, so good weather and um, just a little bit more about our campus. We do have about 1100 students. So we do fall into that smaller um, private institution category. And with that, we have an average class size of 23 students and um, 11 to one student to faculty ratio, which on average, you might have about 11 students to one professor. Um, biggest class size would be about 30 students. Uh, we have 39 majors and 40 minors, and so that allows you to have over 100 areas of study because within those majors, we do have different concentrations to choose from, um, and so that would be your focus area. And some of our distinctive majors at Fresno Pacific would be our nursing. Um, it's actually brand new to FPU. We are going to launch that this year, so we're super excited to get that ball rolling and to get those that first cohort of students into the program. Um, the first cohort um, is going to be about 24 students. So we'll have, uh, we'll have 24 spots available. And then as the program um, continues on year by year, we are hoping to increase those spots available for the nursing program. But it's a really great um, major because you get that clinical experience. And so it's very hands-on. We're partnered with local hospitals in Fresno. Um, and so you can get that experience there. And then uh, we have our liberal arts major. So this is a great way to prepare our teachers. So if you wanna be a, a teacher, um, it's gonna prepare you to go into the education field and to get that um, credential eventually after you graduate with your bachelor's. And then we also have a software engineering program. We're actually the only um, institution university to have a software engineering program in the whole San Joaquin Valley. So it's something that we definitely take pride in and um, it really prepares you if you're interested in graphic design, website development, app development, things like that. Um, what to know about FPU. So a lot of people ask what our top majors are or what we're known for. And so we are known for psychology, um, study of the mind, kinesiology, 
study of body movement um, business. If you want to open up your own business, whether it's management um, or if you want to really dive into the marketing aspect of business. We also are known for a communications major. It's a very broad area of study and you can go into different um, jobs within that field. And then our pre-health, um, also our nursing major. So pre-health sciences is more like the allied health area. If you're not necessarily wanting to go straight into nursing, but want to get that um, health field experience. And that's definitely a major for you. And then one thing that I feel is really, really great about FPU is that we do offer a four-year graduation guarantee. So um, on average, it takes you about five to six years to graduate from a CSU or UC. Um, and so here at FPU, we guarantee that you'll be in and out in four years. And so that means you'll be graduating college with your bachelor's degree, ready to enter the real world um, for, in four years or less. And if for any reason um, you are here longer than four years, we pay for your remaining time with us. There are a little bit of, uh, there's some conditions with that and a little bit um, to learn more about that. But if you visit the experiencefpu.com slash guarantee, you'll see more about what that looks like. We also have three year degrees. So maybe you wanna get out into the real world sooner than four years um, and you wanna maybe take a more accelerated approach to completing your bachelor's. Um, you can definitely do that with many of our majors. We have art, biblical and theological studies, biology, business, um, and so much more. And so with that, you get to basically um, take classes in fall, spring, and summer back to back. So it gets you out in three years. And if you are interested in applying to FPU, um, you can see here some application steps would be first go to our website. Um, there's so many things on our website, information to provide you with, whether it's how to visit our campus or whether it's um, submitting the application. So we do have a $40 application fee, um, but that can be waived if you um, visit campus or maybe come for a preview day, things like that. And then we also ask that um, you submit your high school and college transcripts, college if you're transferring in, um, or maybe if you've even taken dual classes while being in high school. And then ACT or SAT scores are totally optional. Um, if you do uh, submit those to us, then great. We actually offer um, uh, GPA academic scholarships um, combined with ACT or SAT scores. So if you submit those scores to us, then that could really boost your GPA scholarship essentially. Um, and so, yeah, that's something to note. And then important dates for fall. Our uh, last day to apply for the fall 2022 semester is going to be August 15th. Um, so get those applications in and then um, you can always give us a call if you have any questions. This is our general office line. Um, we have the email provided ugadmis at fresno.edu or our phone number 559-453-2039. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you. All right, next up we have Hanfan University. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, I am Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, getting ready to share my screen so that we can uh, hear a little bit more about Pompon. To get started, um, we are located in St. Louis, Missouri, um, which is right in the middle of the United States here in the Midwest. Um, we are excited to offer our students a lot of different options um, when it comes to academic programs, um, when it comes to uh, different cultural events within the St. Louis area. Um, our heritage is that we were founded about um, almost 100 years ago now um, by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. It, they are a, um, a Catholic uh, service organization and they really invested in our community, um, that concept of service, service to others. So we call it um, serving the dear neighbor. And so what that means is that we are committed to serving individuals who um, need support, individuals who want to be part of our community, um, committed to providing that experience and um, a really strong liberal arts education, you know, right where we're located. Um, that's kind of our foundation was um, providing educational opportunities for women at the time um, who were not included in higher ed and then also providing majors um, like deaf education that um, 
aren't always offered at a lot of other institutions. And so we're really proud to offer our 100 plus majors these days. Um, we're proud to be a university. We also have over uh, about 20 different student sport, uh, sports that students can participate in. We are a division three school, which means that you, know, you can participate in sports. You don't necessarily earn scholarships for that, but you definitely have opportunities to get involved and stay active on campus. We also have over 30 different student organizations and a 10 to one student to faculty ratio, which means that our students really get to have a lot of individual attention from faculty members and from staff members. Um, our programs kind of range across the gamut. Some of our larger majors um, include our deaf education and speech language pathology programs. Um, these are majors that really founded Fontbonne and that we're very well known for here in the St. Louis area. Um, we also offer education, definitely a lot of business programs, um, our biological and behavioral science areas, um, humanities. We offer an ABET accredited cybersecurity program and an ABET accredited computer science major. And then we also offer social work, our nursing program, um, and a dietetic, an accelerated dietetics program. So kind of a combination of majors ranging from education and allied health, you know, global business, uh, professional studies, and then of course your traditional humanities and arts and sciences. Um, and we're really really offering a lot of different programs that students are invested in, again, with those small class sizes. For scholarships, we offer merit scholarships. We are continuing to accept applications this year. So if you are a senior and you have not yet applied, you do still have time to do so. Um, you can also still earn our merit scholarships and those go anywhere from 6,500 a year all the way up to $15,000 um, per year, including over a million dollars that we offered to students last year. Um, we also have other scholarships that you can qualify for, student employment assistance if you are looking for a campus job, and then of course your federal, um, federal options in terms of financial aid and um, Missouri options for financial aid as well if you happen to reside in the state of Missouri. Um, if you are looking to either visit campus um, or you know, start your application for juniors, we really recommend that you um, start applying for university in the fall. So sometime in August or September is when our application will open. So right now we'd love to welcome you to visit campus, whether that's a virtual visit with us or whether that is a an on campus visit with us. Um, we're really easy to get to, you know, just right here in kind of the heart of it all um, in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, we also are test free. So when we look at making your admission decisions, we are not looking at your ACT score. We're not looking at your SAT score. We are really looking at your academic grades. Um, for students who have a 3.0 GPA or higher, you will be admitted to Fontbonne. Um, if you have a 2.0 to 2.9, then we look at you, when we look at your application holistically, which means that we're looking for additional things to support your admission to Fontbonne, such as the rigor of the courses that you're taking, um, such as the grade trends. So maybe you had a couple of rough years, um, but you're pulling through now and you're doing a lot better. You know, that could be COVID related. Maybe you, you know, didn't do so well when you were at home um, and doing virtual, but now that you're back in the classroom, you're doing better. Those are the types of things that we look for when we're making our admission decisions for students. Um, we're also, you know, looking for reasons to support your application. And then um, once students are admitted, your admission staff will work with you on all of your next steps. So thank you for your time today hearing about Fontbonne University right here in the heart of St. Louis. And I will look forward to any questions that you have for us at the end of the presentation today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, next up we have Linfield University. Hi there, just start sharing my screen. Awesome, so hi, I'm Isaiah. I'm one of the admission counselors with Linfield University. Um, so just jumping right in. Um, so we're located in McMinnville, Oregon, which is kind of a smaller town right in the heart of wine country in Oregon. So we're about an hour outside of Portland and an hour from the coast. So lots of cool things to check out in this area, lots of cool outdoors opp opportunities if that's your thing. But on campus, we have just over 1400 students and an 11 to one student faculty ratio. So we are a small liberal arts college here in Oregon. Um, we're not religious 
religiously affiliated as well. So there's no chapel requirement or anything like that. Um, and just over 36% of our students are first generation students. So lots of students who come from families who haven't gotten bachelor's degrees before. And you'll meet students from all over the place. But I would say the majority of our students come from like the Western half of the United States. And as far as majors on campus, all of our students actually start out undeclared. So if you're feeling like you don't quite know what you wanna study yet, you actually have until the end of your second year on campus to declare your major. So lots of time there to decide because we have 50 different majors for you to choose from. We have 43 different majors in our College of Arts and Sciences, seven majors and four minors in our School of Business. And then we also have a School of Nursing. Um, and we have, and that's probably our most popular major on campus. Um, our School of Nursing actually has its own campus up in the Portland area. So any students interested in nursing would do two years on our main campus and then two years on our new Portland campus. Um, and, it, and up there, there's tons of great simulation labs and opportunities for clinical experiences and things like that. So um, it is a really cool program, probably our most popular. We have one of the oldest nursing programs in the Pacific Northwest. So a lot to choose from. Um, and then kind of looking at your general education here at Linfield, you'll get a great foundation that you'll get at every, any liberal arts college, really. You'll explore six different modes of inquiry, two areas of diversity studies, and then a writing intensive that's more depending on your major. And it is also pretty common for Linfield students to double major or have a minor or two. So lots of opportunities there if you're not quite sure if you want to choose one thing to study or if a combination of majors might help you reach your goal a little bit better. Um, there's also a lot of great opportunities for student faculty collaborative research. So lots of ways to kind of build your resume and get your work published before you even graduate. And it's not just in the sciences, like you see the people in the fancy lab coats on your screen, but in all of our different academic areas, you have opportunities to work with your professors and get your work published or go off to different conferences and present your research. But um, you could do that as early as your freshman year if you want to, or you could wait a little bit until you decide or settle into what you want to study. And study abroad is also something that we really emphasize here at Linfield. About 40% of our students end up studying abroad while they're here. Um, and students go all over the place, like the Bahamas or off to Peru or the Netherlands. So lots of cool options. If you were to come to Linfield and study a language or international business, then you'd actually study abroad for a full academic year as part of the curriculum. But if you didn't want to focus on a language, you could also go during our January term. And that way you could go with the Linfield class and a Linfield professor. So you'd also have some familiar faces with you. And one thing that's awesome about Linfield is they pay for that first round trip airfare ticket. So sometimes that can save you thousands of dollars. And as far as campus experience, we have over 60 different clubs and organizations on campus, 14 different performing arts groups, four media organizations. So lots of different leadership op opportunities on campus and ways to start building your resume four sororities and three fraternities here on campus. I would say it's about 20% of our student population. So it's definitely a community there that, that for those that want it, but it's not like an overwhelming part of the school uh, culture on campus. And then we have intramural sports as well and um, an outdoor recreation program again to explore the wonderful outdoors here in Oregon. And we are a residential campus. Students typically live on campus for the first three years, but you only spend two of those years in dorms. After that, we have a few apartment complexes on campus that you could move into. So you'd get your own bedroom and just share a bathroom with one other person at that point. So it's a little bit indep more independent that way. Um, but a lot of our different dorms on campus, you'll only have one, one roommate, most of them are doubles, um, but the majority of our students do live on campus. We do also have pet friendly housing here on campus. So if you have a furry friend or maybe like a, a lizard or, or bird you wanna bring with you, you can, they can come with you. And we have 23 different athletics teams here on campus, so lots to choose from there. We're Division Three, so if you're into athletics, um, I would say we're a great option for you to really maintain that student-athlete balance. Um, our football team has 66 consecutive winning seasons, which is a record for any division, um, so that's really awesome. Game days are super fun on campus for, for any of our athletics teams, um, but it is a great community on campus. 
And looking at applications really quick, we are on the common application. So um, it's a free way to apply. If you're looking at other schools, a lot of other schools are on there too, but um, we don't require any test scores. We're completely test blind. So it won't help you or hurt you if you include them with your application. And the deadlines are November 1st for early action, which is non-binding and February 1st, which is that regular decision deadline. Um, and um, this past year, 95% of our students received financial aid. Most students end up paying close to what they would at like a public school, even though we're a private school. So that price tag can be a little bit intimidating. And last but not least, feel free to come visit us on campus or check out one of our virtual visits online. We'd be happy to tell you more about campus and show you all that we have to offer. Awesome, thank you. All right, next up we have California State University Maritime Academy. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well? Okay, perfect. So give me one second here. I'm going to try to share my screen. Ah, oh, I'm jumping ahead here. Okay, well, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Gonzalez. I am one of the um, admissions officers uh, here at uh, Cal Maritime um, Academy. Um, so jumping straight to it, uh, we are the smallest CSU out of the 23 CSUs um, here in the uh, CSU system in California. Um, we are located in the Bay Area, um, specifically in the city of Vallejo, right under the Carquinas Bridge. Um, we are the only college uh, university uh, with a ship uh, here um, out of the um, 23 CSUs. Our TSGB training ship Golden Bear is stationed along the shore um, of the Carquinas Shores um, throughout the year, uh, except for two months out of the year um, when she travels around international waters um, uh, with our uh, some of our cadets, with some of our um, programs and different majors, which I will discuss in more detail. Um, so yeah, so just to debunk um, some misinformation in regards to Cal Maritime, um, contrary to the belief that we are a military school, um, I'm here to say that we are in fact not a military school. Um, however, we do have some military programs um, that are in association with different military branches, um, the US Navy, uh, the US Coast Guard and the Air Force, um, to just to name a few. Uh, we have on-campus and off-campus um, programs. Um, and, but yes, and nonetheless, our military programs are an option and not an obligation. Um, and so, yeah, um, speaking more to kind of the quasi-military structure uh, that is embedded into our students' education, um, we do have a dress code. Um, our students are required, depending on what major, uh, seven majors, I will speak a little bit on the majors as well. Um, they either wear their brown khakis or what we call the boilers, which is more for the engineering students, um, dark um, blue um, kind of uniforms. Um, but yes, uh, we also uh, have grooming standards. Um, our students are also required uh, to attend morning formation, uh, which is held every Monday, Wednesday, and uh, Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Um, there in uh, formation, uh, our faculty uh, members will do uniform inspections. Um, they will uh, check attendance and they'll also uh, um, uh, do any uh, pending announcements and things of that nature. Um, but yes, uh, moving along. Our seven majors um, are business administration with an emphasis in international business and logistics. Uh, we have our global studies and maritime affairs major. We have our oceanography major. Uh, we have our three engineering majors, um, our mechanical engineering uh, with a U.S. Coast Guard uh, license option, uh, energy design option, and a mechanical design option as well. Uh, we have our facilities engineering and technology uh, major, our marine engineering technology, and last but not least, we have our marine transportation um, major. Our impacted majors are our three engineering majors um, plus our marine transportation. Um, non-impacted uh, business administration, um, global studies, and oceanography. 
So what makes um, Cal Mary time unique? Um, one of the uh, main things uh, that makes us unique is that we have a small and intimate learning environment. Um, we have uh, a student and faculty ratio of two, uh, 20 to one. Um, so class average sizes are about 25. Um, you hear different experiences in different institutions where you'll sit in a lecture hall, uh, four or 500 students, you raise your hand. Um, yeah, chances are that you, you get called on by your professor uh, are slim to none. Um, at Cal Mary time, that, that is not the case. Um, you really do get to develop um, that sm uh, close, uh, intimate relationship with your professors, um, and it proves to be beneficial in the, in the long haul. Um, they're actually the ones that um, also help our uh, students um, find uh, internships and jobs uh, after graduation and um, during their time at Cal Mary time. Um, and so, yeah, so another uh, cool thing about Cal Mary time is that uh, our students um, get to travel on international waters, um, no matter uh, what major they decide to go in. Um, our engineering majors, along with our marine transportation majors, um, get to go on a 60 day cruise um, with our TSGB, our training ship Golden Bear. Um, she sails around the world for 60 days. Um, they've been to places such as France, um, Bulgaria, uh, Japan, uh, China, Vietnam, uh, Hawaii, uh, I mean, you name it, they've been all over the world. Um, and yes, our, our marine transportation students are taught to navigate the ship. Uh, while our engineering majors are taught how to fix it um, in real time. Um, so we have this joke that, you know, some of our students um, can't parallel uh, park a car, but uh, they're fine parking a ship. Um, so that's uh, pretty cool. Um, and so, yeah, so another thing is that um, it's important, our, our geographic location is very important in terms of um, career choice. Uh, so Vallejo being a city that's located right in between Sacramento, um, the world of policy and politics, and San Francisco, one of the world's most studied estuaries, it's uh, um, really important since you get uh, the best of both worlds. And lastly, I'm going to just squeeze in there that we have a 90% employment rate two months after graduation, and um, we are top five uh, in regards to salary potential upon graduation. And um, I don't know if my time is up, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm pretty much done. Yeah. Awesome, okay. thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right, oh, next up I, is Cornell Sorry, College. can I just squeeze in there? We're still accepting applications. Okay. Um, until July 1st, <laughs> thank Perfect. you. Thank you. All right, Cornell College, you're up. All right, uh, happy, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Jonathan Badesija. I'm Assistant Director of uh, Regional Recruitment for Cornell College. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you all. Uh, but first, I need uh, the stop sharing the screen. Yep, yep, there you go. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. All right, so let's talk about Cornell College. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm Assistant Director at uh, Cornell College. Um, we are a small private uh, institution. We're located in Mount Vernon, Iowa. We're about, I would say, four hours away from downtown Chicago. So we're located in the Midwest. And if you're uh, familiar with Iowa, we're about 20 minutes um, north of Iowa City, which is a big, necessarily a metropolitan city uh, in Iowa. But here at Cornell College, we offer over 40 majors. We are essentially a liberal arts college, but we do offer STEM programs. So even though we do have a lot of programs that are uh, based in regards to like the liberal arts, you know, the art, the history, um, you know, things of that sort, the foreign languages, we also do have a lot of programs in the STEM uh, field, like biology, chemistry, physiology, engineering, you know, we have IT, computer science program, but I would say our emphasis really is when it comes to those uh, liberal arts majors, but like, like I mentioned, we definitely have programs outside of liberal arts. Um, when it comes to our student body size, we have about a thousand students, um, a thousand students, but we're growing, right? So if you're looking for a small college, this is definitely uh, the place. And like I mentioned as well, 
um, we have over 40 majors. Uh, we allow our students uh, to double major, pick up minors, um, and we do not offer any graduate programs. We only offer bachelor programs, okay? Um, so just a couple quick facts. Um, we do offer what's called the block schedule, which I'll talk about here in a second. But before that, I wanna emphasize on the fact that even though we're located in Iowa, about 80% of our students come from out of state, right? So we have students that come from all over the US and we have students that really come from all over the world. We have a very strong international student body population on our campus. Uh, we have a faculty uh, to student ratio from 11 to one. So again, definitely smaller classrooms, a lot of accessibility to staff members, a lot of accessibility to professors. Um, you know, that's kind of like the experience you'll get um, at Cornell College. And then when it comes to our scholarships, um, you know, as you can see here on the screen, they vary from $18,000 to $32,000, right? And our scholarships are really based on accumulation or kind of a lot of different factors, uh, your GPA, maybe your involvement as an undergrad, right, extracurricular activities, um, you know, if you decide you want to utilize your SAT or ACT, uh, we are test optional, so you don't have to, but if you want to, you can utilize that. Um, so, like, again, scholarship process is very holistic. Same thing with the application process, um, you know, generally, holistic process, um, you know, I, I rather not say like, hey, you need to have this GPA or this SAT, you know, I rather, um, if you're interested, you apply, um, or maybe we can connect, and then I could kind of go over uh, your transcript with you and just kind of tell you like, hey, this is where you're at. But I will always tell everybody, if you're interested in applying to Cornell, just apply, and we'll go to the application process together. But like I said, it's holistic, um, you know, test optional. If you want to apply with a GPA, strictly transcripts, you can. If you want to apply using your test score, you can, right? You have both options. Um, and then we also do require some writing samples along with that, okay? But what I want to touch upon is the block schedule, right? So this is kind of like what defines the Cornell experience. So um, unlike many colleges, uh, which have the traditional method of going through, you know, maybe you'll take five classes throughout a semester at the same time, right? Here at Cornell, we break those five courses into smaller blocks, right? So I like to call them smaller semesters, right? So for example, let's say you have to take a math course, right? Um, that class, instead of being five months, as you take it along with the rest of your courses, will actually only be three and a half weeks, right? And you'll only focus on one class, right? For three and a half weeks, 18 days, you'll focus on Math 101, right? You'll only have the same, that class, right? Monday through Friday, three hours a day, and you'll be with the same cohort of students and the same professor. So when, you know, we at Cornell say we have for a transformative learning experience, we really do that because we really, downsize the classroom experience and we really personalize um you know your learning experience at cornell right again you'll have the same professor you'll be able to build that rapport uh you won't be overwhelmed right with large lecture halls and you'll really be able to dive into some of these concepts right um we also do of course offer student support services in regards to you know dss disability support services and also any type of uh academic support services so if you do find that um you know taking one class three and a half weeks uh, a little bit overwhelming, we do have support services uh, to kind of assist you uh, in kind of adapting to that style. But, you know, we've been doing this uh, for over 40 years. Um, again, it's not very common, but if it's something that interests you, the block schedule is very neat. Um, and we have very, very strong um, testimonies from our graduates when it comes to going to grad school, even going into the workplace, because they're just a little bit more prepared when it comes to the pace, but they're also um, very much uh, in tune with being very deep detailed in their work, right? Because they take that time to be able to do so here at Cornell with the use of the block schedule. Um, and just to go off of that, um, just a couple other things, obviously outside of, you know, the academics and the majors, we are division three in sports. We have pretty much all the major sports, I would say, um, besides swimming, right? We have football, basketball, swimming, track, field. Um, you know, you, you, you could imagine, we definitely have those majors. There aren't any scholarships attached to that, but it is the opportunity to be able to be involved. Along with that, we have several clubs uh, that you could join, um, you know, whether the academic clubs, fraternities, sororities, major niche clubs. So again, a lot of opportunities at Cornell College, um, you know, and if you're interested, as you can see here on the screen, contact me directly. My name is Jonathan, like I mentioned, I'm the assistant director. I'm always open to meet virtually in person or over the phone, uh, just to be able to provide more details. Uh, but again, uh, thank you for your time. Awesome, thank you. 
All right, I would like to move on to the next portion uh, of our session. So I would like to invite everybody back onto the screen. Awesome, thank you. All right, so uh, I do have one or maybe two questions depending on time for each of you so we can hear from you again. Um, so my first question is, what advice do you have for students who are going through this uh, admissions process either now or in the near future? And we'll go back up to DigiPen. Yeah, look at um, schools that you haven't heard of before. There's a lot of options. I think this group represents um, just a, a lot of really unique schools. Um, visit if you can and talk to a current student to know what it's like to be in class um, every day and kind of, kind of what the rhythm is and what you can expect as a student. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Fresno uh, Pacific University? Yeah, um, I'm right there with Michelle from DigiPen. I feel like it is super important um, to just visit the campus. I feel like it really allows you to envision yourself there as a student, see if this is a good fit for you. Um, and then also being, bringing your parents or family along if you can, um, and just kind of hearing what they have to say as well. Um, but ultimately being able to, to feel at home at the place that you'll soon call your college um, is a really, really good indicator of, okay, I think I wanna go here. I'm Melissa from Fontblanc again. I would say from my perspective, I would really encourage you to uh, take some time to reflect, you know, especially for juniors. Now is the best time to really sit down, even if it's 10 minutes a day in a conversation with yourself to say, what do I want for my future? What do I want my life to look like? What do I want my educational experience to be? You are fortunate in that you have a lot of access to information. But it starts with, as you parse through that, it really starts with understanding what makes you tick and what makes you tick could be different than what makes your parents tick could be different than what makes your friend tick could be different than, you know, what makes your counselor tick. And so really finding and taking advantage of those opportunities to just be reflective with yourself and be honest with yourself about where you think you're going to be successful, what you think you're going to be successful in, because you have a whole lifetime to work. You have a whole lifetime um, to take advantage of all of these things. And college isn't the last step in that journey. It is the first step in that journey. Um, and I think you're going to meet a lot of people who are very vested in what their institution offers and we at heart all care about you as a student. So take that time to really, really help us help you um, by saying, this is what this is what I'm excited about and this is what I'm scared about. Um, and it's okay to be all of those things. So that's what I would say. Absolutely, thank you so much. Yeah. Linfield University. Yeah, I totally agree with Melissa and just kind of adding to that, just kind of giving yourself the time to do all of that and just like try not to rush through it or wait until the very last minute and where you feel like you have all this extra pressure because it can feel overwhelming as it is. So just kind of try to make it easy on yourself throughout the process because it really is an exciting time. So um, try to just kind of focus on the exciting parts of it or what makes you excited. Thank you. Uh, California State University, Maritime. Yeah, kind of um, piggybacking off of Melissa's comment, um, I, I think it's re really important to self-reflect, especially, um, you know, as, as a junior, um, you, you don't really know what to, what to expect after graduation. I, I think it's important to discern um, what you're good at versus what your passion is. Um, and, and that really only comes upon just really some self-reflection and, and knowing what gets you up in the morning. And of course, as a young person, that's quite difficult, but um, I, I would I, I would advise uh, to all young people to start thinking about that um, at a young age. Thank you. Cornell College. Yeah, and, and just to echo everyone else's advice, um, you know, I definitely agree uh, visiting campuses and, and self-reflection is very, very important. Um, and, and, and like today, you know, you all logged in and, you know, you're gonna get all this information and, you know, it's gonna feel a little bit overwhelming and you're, maybe if you sign up, you'll receive a lot of emails and a lot of literature, but don't forget that, you know, we are here, you know, we're people and we're here to help you, you know? So don't hesitate and texting us and calling us. I'm pretty sure I could speak for everybody on this panel. You know, we'd be more than happy to have a conversation, not just with you all, but with your family, right? And, and kind of assist you. So don't ever feel like you're alone in this process. And, and don't ever feel like you can't reach out to multiple universities. Like I said, we're here to serve students. So 
again, reach out to us. Don't hesitate. Uh, we're here to help you um, and definitely utilize us because we are a tool for you all as you as you make this very important decision moving forward. Thank you so much for that. All right, awesome. So that's going to bring us right up to time this evening. So I want to send a huge shout out to our presenters. Thank you for putting all this time into uh, creating a presentation for us. Um, and thank you to our participants for jumping in. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule, sign up for more sessions. There will be more throughout this week, which is super exciting. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other recordings at strivescan.com slash launch. And that's it for us. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.